Hi everyone. In the last video, we set up a basic data connector for a SQLite database running locally. In this video, we'll start to implement predicates by turning them into WHERE clauses in the generated SQL. Let's pick up where we left off. We can modify our SQL template to include a WHERE clause. To generate our WHERE clause, we will need to interpret the contents of the WHERE property of the query request. To see what this will look like, we can find some examples in the snapshots we generated last time. This predicate expression has type binary comparison operator, which means it is a predicate which compares a column to a value using an operator, in this case, the equality operator. This predicate asserts that the artist ID column is equal to the literal value 5. In the SDK, these predicate expressions are given the type expression. And we can see that there are several types of expressions that are permitted. There are logical expressions like AND, OR, and NOT, which combine other simpler expressions. There are unary and binary comparison operators. And there are exists expressions, which are expressed using a subquery against another collection. For now, we'll concentrate on logical expressions and comparison operator expressions. We're going to build up the WHERE clause recursively, starting with the simplest expressions at the leaves of the predicate expression tree and working upwards. As we go, we will need to keep track of any query parameters that we also need to pass to SQLite, so let's make a place to store those. As we encounter literal values, we'll append them as new parameters to this list. We also need to add our parameters to the database fetch function call and to our logging function. Let's delegate to a helper function in order to build our WHERE clause. Let's call our function visit expression because we're using the visitor design pattern. We'll handle each different type of expression by pattern matching on the type field of the current expression. For the logical expressions AND and OR, we will visit each of the sub-expressions in turn and concatenate the generated SQL. We need a helper function here, which visits an expression but always wraps the result in parentheses. This way, we don't generate SQL with the wrong operator precedence in cases where logical expressions are nested. Note that we also need to make a special case for zero sub-expressions, or else we'll generate invalid SQL. We can complete the OR and NOT cases similarly. For unary comparison operators, we can switch on expa.operator. Right now, the only option is the isNull operator. For binary comparison operator expressions, we can switch on expa.operator.type. We will only implement the equal operator because our schema doesn't advertise any custom binary operators yet. If we wanted to add another operator, like a greater than operator for numbers, for example, we would do that here and also advertise that operator in the NDC schema response. Here we're using two helper functions. The column property an inequality expression has type comparison targets, so we have one helper function to break that type down into a SQL expression. The value expression has type comparison value and represents the right-hand side of the equality expression, so we need a second helper function to break that type down. Let's define those functions now. We're skipping a lot of detail here, but we'll handle the simplest cases. In the visit comparison target function, we only handle the column case, where the path is empty. The other cases will be added when we support the relationships capability. In the visit comparison value function, we only handle the scalar case, in which we push the value onto our parameter list. Again, the other cases correspond to capabilities we haven't implemented yet. The other two expression types are unsupported for now. So we'll throw an error here. We can come back to these later.
Now let's remove our old snapshots and rerun the test suite. We can see that predicate tests are passing, but some other test cases are not. That's okay. We'll keep iterating over the next few videos until we have all green tests here. In our snapshots directory, we can also see that we're returning the correct data for some simple predicate queries now. This query searches for albums with artist ID 5, and we can see that the response contains the correct rows now. Now let's deploy to Hasura and see how the GraphQL schema looks. Let's add a where clause to fetch the albums for artist ID 1. We can see that we're generating the right SQL and that we're parameterizing the query correctly as well. Now let's try a query that uses a logical operator. We'll select albums for multiple artists at the same time using an OR expression. Again, we generate valid SQL and parameters, although we do have too many parentheses here. That's something we can improve later, but it's better to err on the safe side for now. That's all for this video. We've added support for basic where clauses, and we'll come back and fill in some of the missing expression types later. But next time, we'll take a look at order by clauses. Thanks for watching.